Now that's a long question from consolidation section B. Both questions are compulsory and must be attempted. So there are two 15 marks question. We have just picked up one. Please write your answer within the answer booklet in accordance with the detailed instruction provided within each of the questions in this section of the exam paper. And then we see that they have given us uh, income statement for a parent and a subsidiary, Caswick and Derwent. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see what is the requirement. We, we will read these things later on. Okay. So during the year, Caswick company sold goods to costing 1 million to Devon for 1.5 at 31st May, 30% of these goods remained in. So we'll find out unrealized profit Yes. to adjust our cost of sales. So first is prepare the Caspic Group consolidated statement of profit or loss for the year ended 31st May. Note the statement should stop once the consolidated profit for the year has been determined. The amounts attributable to the NCI interest and equity owners of are not required. Okay, so you just have to consolidate until here. Uh, this, this, what does that last part mean? I will explain you. What happens that when you make, when you have to make a full income statement, once yes. you consolidate your profit, then you have to split it between the parent and the NCI. So this is what we are not going to do. Uh, okay. So this is, it's not needed. This is for seven marks, very easy. Then which of the following formulas describe? Okay, let's do the first question. Okay. We'll make the income statement. So in income statement, you have got your sales here mm -hmm. and we'll keep some space for our workings here. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, here and here you've got the, okay. So I'll make some space more because I need here parent subsidiary. So I'll call it, you know, P. Uh, it was actually Keswick and then here it is Derwent. and let's start reading the question first. Let's read the question. It says Keswick company acquired 80% of the share capital of Derwent on 1st June 2005. The summarized draft statement of profit or loss for Keswick and Derwent for the year ended 31st May are shown below. Revenue, cost of sales, gross profit, operating expenses. In exam, you don't need to write down everything, okay? But okay. I'm just writing it here for the sake of, uh, you know, calculation. We right. actually, we, we do not need to do that. But I'm just putting it here. Okay. So you've got here minus 2200 and then you make a total and it is 1600. From here it is minus 600. This is tax and you make a total. So this was your cost of sale. This is your gross profit. You don't need to do all of that. Uh, I mean, uh, how to say, you just need to make the parent, but we are just putting it here for ourselves. Operating uh, expenses you have. And then, okay, let me just make it short so that it comes within the line. Okay. And then you have profit before tax and then you have tax expense and you have profit for the year okay mm -hmm. profit for the year so these are the lines and i'll just make some formatting i'm repeating it again we don't need to make this formatting i'm just doing it okay for ourselves so we've got here gross profit and we have here you know, operating profit before tax and final profit. And if you go back to this one, this is 3200 minus 1700. And then you have minus 960. Is minus 960. 540 and minus 140 and this one right so i'll just format it again accordingly okay so this is what is given to you so here you have your group okay group income statement and sales <clears throat> so we know that how to calculate sales it is parent sales plus subsidiary sales 
minus intra-group sales. And uh -huh. intra-group sales are during the year, Keswick company sold goods costing 1 million to Devon for 1.5 million. So I would say minus 1500. So this is the formula for your group sales. It is done. Mm. It's 10,100. Then you have cost of sales. Now you remember that within cost of sales, you said parent cost of sale plus subsidiary cost of sale, like, you know, 4,600 plus 1,700 minus intra-group sales, just like above. And plus you have unrealized profit. This was the formula. So let's first calculate our unrealized profit, how much it is. Unrealized profit was the part of the profit which remained in the closing inventory, okay? Yes. So we say that profit on intra-group sales, Profit on intra-group sales is 500,000. So because we are assuming three zeros on the top, okay, yeah. uh, here, and there are three zeros here. So I will not take, so actually your profit is 500,000, but you should be calling it 500 because you are assuming that three zeros are on the top. Okay. So profit on intra-group sales were half, half million because 1 million worth of goods were sold for 1.5 million. And they say that 30% of these goods remained in stock. So we we'll say that, you know, closing stock, or I will say that profit in closing stock, yeah. in closing inventory. How much is that? 30%. 30%. So 500,000 into 30%. This is the number 150, which is your POP. So I'll just put it here, 150. And this number I need to bring here. And I put here equals to sign. So it comes 4950. We want to make it negative. So we'll just close the bracket. And we multiply with minus one. So if we make a total, it is 5150. And you can check it. I mean, before you move forward in such a simple question, because your question is very simple, you can check. Because if you check your individual profits, so 3,800 and 1,500, the individual profit should be, if you make a total of individuals, it should be 50. Mm. And 53 minus 150 is 5,150. So you yes. are correct here, okay? Okay. And then what you need to do, you will just copy paste this thing here. Then you have operating expenses will be minus 2,200. So I will do it like this. It is 2,200 plus 960. Okay, it's the same number. There is no need to make any adjustment here. Mm -hmm. And you make a total, it is your group profit is now 1900. Uh, 3160515019. Is it the, yeah, different is still, difference is still 150. And these two, again, the tax you will again add in both companies. So you would say minus 600 minus minus 600 minus 140. So you make a total, mm. these two. That's all, one, two, five, zero. Now this was, now this is the group profit. Now this group profit actually should be divided between the parent and the NCI. If you remember when we were doing, we would set separate separate the profit, how much belongs to the parent, how much belong to NCI. But in this question, they did not ask us. They said that the statement should stop once the consolidated profit for the year has been determined. So we should stop here. The amounts attributable to NCI and equity owners are not required. So they don't want us to split this thing. So we stop it here. So if you do until here, and you find out this number, you have secured seven marks in exam. Mm. So it was not something different or something difficult. It's the same thing. So this was your part A. Let me call it part A. Okay. And now we have here part B. So what do they ask us to do in part B? Part B says, which of the following formulas describe the amount to be entered in the consolidated statement of profit or loss as profit attributable to equity owners. <coughs> so 
So profit equitable to equity owner means that this gross, this total profit minus the NCI share that goes oh. to equity owners, right? Yes. So, so which one yeah. should be the answer? Yeah. New profit after tax minus NCI. Done. Two marks are there. Okay. And then part C, what amount should be shown in the consolidated statement of profit or loss for the non-controlling interest? So how much is the non-controlling interest now? Uh, for the non-controlling interest. Okay, now for that we need to probably read below. <clears throat> Uh, okay, statement of profit or loss. Statement of profit or loss, how much belongs to NCI? Now, <clears throat> you know that NCI uh, is 20%. Yes. So NCI will take 20% of the profit of its share. But 20% from where? 20% from the parent or from the group or 20% from the NCI, from the subsidiary. Of course, NCI lies here, 20% from here, okay? 20% mm. NCI is not going to take 20% from the group profit or from the parent profit. It is in the subsidiary thing, Derwent. So NCI is 20% of Derwent profit. So, but before you give him 20% from 400, which is maybe $40, uh, sorry, 80, before you do that, you need to make sure that where is the intra-group? This is unrealized profit. I mean, we did oh, yeah. these questions as well. That yeah. if the subsidiary sells goods, then subsidiary profit you adjust and then you give to the NCI. So who is selling the goods? Let's see. Uh, during the year, Caswick company sold goods to Derwent. So parent is selling to the subsidiary. Yes. So unrealized profit is here. So that makes your life easy. And uh, part C was, this was which one? Part C. C, yeah. C. So this is C part, okay? So mm -hmm. how do we do that? You would say that uh, NCI <clears throat> subsidiary profit is 400 and NCI is 20%. So I'll just take 400 multiplied by 0.2. This is your answer. Mm. That's all. Yes, if, 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 if in the question they told us that Derwent company had sold goods to Keswick, if the subsidiary mm. had sold the goods, in that case, what you would have done, you would have said 400 minus 150 is 250. And then from 250, you would give 20%. Okay. Got it? Yeah. But the question is quite simple. Yeah, it's not too just, bad. I mean, nothing. Then you go to part D. And part D, it says the following table um, shows factors to be considered when determining whether a parent subsidiary relationship exists or not. So significant parent and subsidiary. And now you remember it was the first one. Parent subsidiary means where either you have more than 51% or basically you need to see if you have got control or not. Control. Mm -hmm. So control we are looking for. Significant influence is not control. Okay. This is control. Control. Non-controlling interest. This is one of the factors. The following table shows factors to be considered when determining whether a parent subsidiary, yeah, this is also. Because if there is a non-controlling interest, the other one is parent. Mm. Greater than 50% of equity shares, equity shares, more than 50%, yes, it gives you control. If you have 50% or more of preference shares, then there is no control. Because preference shares do not have voting right. Voting right comes with equity shares, mm. and therefore, it is D is also the choice. 100% of the equity shares being held by an investor, correct? It is control. Sure. Yeah. Greater than 50% of the preference shares, no control. No control, okay. 50% of all shares and all debt being held by an investor. No. More than 50%. Mm -hmm. Greater than 50% of preference shares and debt being held by an investor. No. No. So you've got here, 
this one b c d and e mm. that's all yeah so too bad i mean i mean you, you j- j- just consider it that it's a 15 marks question but it's nothing it's nothing different than you know compiling five or six small questions at one point 